All right, what's caught your attention in the world of football this week? Oh, plenty. What? Plenty. I oh, just you first today. <laughs> you got to you got to no, give no, me no, something. No. I know you at the start <laughs> talked to Jared about about yes. uh, different things about your day today and how you tried to you know put it off. Your plane was delayed and you're a bit rushed and bit, all these sort of things. Bit rattled. Bit rattled mentally, yeah. but can you give that us was good? Give us something? Honestly, I, I do really enjoy. I don't know why it's an enjoyable experience being part of it. Um, thankful to be in the room with with the other you know great minds that are in there. Uh, it's run exceptionally well. It's not easy. It's difficult. As always, there's going to be some incredibly unlucky and excellent players who have had big seasons that are going to miss out. And as I said to Jared, you, you can get it to 26, 27 pretty comfortably, as you would know, doing yes. this every week. Getting it to 22, and we're, we're nowhere near that stage yet. The final meeting will be after round 24 on the Monday. Um, How is much time did you really put into difficult? the forward pocket today? Because that's the one position that I've battled with all year. Yeah. Um, well, as sort of Jared alluded to off the top, I think the narrowing down your key defenders this year, for whatever reason, has been really difficult. Some through injury, some through a poor first half of the year, some through a poor back half of the year. I don't mm -hmm. think it's been, I think it's been one key defender who's been really consistent throughout the 24 weeks. I don't, through injury and, and suspension and, and other issues. Um, and the ruck's difficult. I don't think, I don't think there's been yep. a standout. I think it's not not giving away too yep. much to say there hasn't been a standout ruckman. Given Gil was an A-grade uh, ruckman in exactly the right. <laughs> very, did, did he get to the very, casting very, vote again? Very passionate about that. And then the, and then the small forward is... So, uh, honestly, I think the last two weeks is important for a number of reasons. Mm. Yep. Totally, totally yep. agree. Is it is it something... Are you guys okay if we go through a bit of it and set up the, the sports day ladder? predictor for the next couple of weeks. And we actually set up your segment, how, how we think, well, I've got to get your, this is like, your boy in on this though, Jared. It's not like your number one Guernsey idea. <laughs> <laughs> okay. It's just as long as Jeez, that's, that's the positive work. feedback I got off. Yeah. Yeah, there was two negative people. Yeah, they were you two. They were positive. So set, set this up for us. So, so what I want to do is I want to create the next two weeks. We pick who's going to the, the wins and losses to create our ladder. We're picking the eight teams. We're picking the yeah. we're picking our final with eight. the ladder predictor. So the consensus is though. So if Jared and I think Brisbane are going to be Collingwood this week, but you're Collingwood too bad. Yep. Okay. We set up. We've all got to agree to it at the end of the day. I've got the ladder in front of me. All right. So let's let's start rolling through them then. Okay. Collingwood v Brisbane is the first game, and it's a tough one. I think with Collingwood's injuries that uh, they they now have. All right. Who game you got, at Marvel. Who are you going for? I'm tipping Brisbane. Same here. I was going to go Collingwood, but uh, the majority win, so I'll go Brisbane. Brisbane. Okay, so Richmond versus North Melbourne. Tigers. Tigers, move on to that one. Now, Gold Coast versus the Blues on the Gold Coast. Well, the Blues, but I wouldn't be surprised if it's an upset, but for the purpose of this exercise, Tigers. I don't know the Blues. Blues, Blues, Blues it yep. is. Okay. GWS versus the Bombers. At home. The At Giants. home for the Giants. 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 Yep. Okay, done. St Kilda versus Geelong at Marvel Stadium. Geelong. Saints. Oh, see, this is where it gets over to you, Jono. Come on, Jono. We've got 18 this games is mine. to get through This here. is mine. Okay, let's get through it. I'm going for the Cats. All right. Majority wins. Yep. Adelaide versus the Sydney Swans. Adelaide Sydney. Oval. Adelaide. Adelaide. Okay. All right. All right. Sunday games. Western Bulldogs versus West Coast. Western Bulldogs. Melbourne versus Hawthorne at the MCG. There you go, Melbourne. 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 And Port Adelaide versus Fremantle at Optus Stadium. Mm, I think Fremantle are going to win that one. But you think Fremantle? I do. I, I think Port. Jared? Port. All right, okay. next round. Port, okay. Next round we're up to. All right, let's – from uh, Essendon versus Collingwood at the MCG. Pies. Pies? Pies. <laughs> Pies. <laughs> I'd buy. That'll, that'll, that'll get on Saturday morning. Uh, Hawthorne versus Frio. Uh, the MCG. MCG. I Hawks. Might, I might tip the Hawks. I'm tipping Hawks. Oh, does it then? Yep. North Melbourne versus the Suns. Jared, you go first this time. I'll go Suns. Okay, Suns. Yes. Thank you for that. That's, in, Taz, that's in Tassie? Yep. yep. Brisbane versus St Kilda at the Gabba. Saints. I mean Brisbane. 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 Yep. Geelong versus the Western Bulldogs at GMHBA. Oh, goodness me. This is an interesting game, this one. I'm going to go the Cats at home. Same. Cats it is. <laughs> I'll let you do to go first on that one. Adelaide to beat West Coast. Yes. Port Adelaide Port to beat Adelaide Richmond. Richmond. They'll beat Richmond at home. Sydney versus Melbourne at the SCG. I'm going Melbourne. I think Melbourne. 
All right, Melbourne it is. And Carlton versus GWS at Marvel Stadium. The Blues. The Blues. All right. All right. What do we got? So we have the first week of the finals would be Collingwood taking on Melbourne. 1v4. Four. We would have Brisbane hosting Port Adelaide. 2v3 at the Gabba. That's big for the Lions if they can achieve that. We have the Blues. It's big for, the, uh, for Port too if they can win that. Yes. Get a home, yes. home, home prelim. prelim. We have the Blues playing your Western Bulldogs who sneak into eighth <laughs> position just over the Saints on a percentage of three points. Yes. Gee. And then we have Geelong hosting Adelaide. Where would the, But we didn't put margins in this, so let's Yeah, let's where would the Geelong Adelaide final be? It's a Geelong home game. Surely that would have to be in Geelong. It would have to be. They'd have to push for it. Would it have to be. For that, wouldn't they? Listen, not, with the nah, Adelaide, not with Adelaide the stadium. Adelaide get a good no, following. It has to be. No, Adelaide, no with the stadium. No, stadium half full. No, earned no the chance. Right no. to host a final. No, that's like me saying now team. that Bulldogs and Geelong in round 23, 24 should be moved no, because 10,000 dogs fans don't get to watch Geelong it. Geelong have played Fremantle at home before. Yeah, but a with final. a full stadium, full, not with half the stadium. stadium. They've, earned, they've earned a home final regardless. I played in the grand final when the stadium they play home was games at the G. half under construction. Not sure that's a comparison. Well, it's probably not, <laughs> but it's, 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 you just you cop it. So that's interesting because what we've got there is the Bulldogs and Geelong playing each other but both making it, which – yeah. If some of the results obviously go different ways, that game is massive in, mm. in round 24. Right. We will post our sports day finals brackets to our social media accounts. We'll see how accurate Love it. we are. So what we're saying is there's weeks. not going to be one upset in the next two weeks. Well, we've got St Kilda dropping out, Sydney dropping out. Giants dropping Giants, out. Giants, yeah, and Essendon not making it. So I think we've been quite – Gee, the Adelaide Sydney game this week is Jeez. just, is just mm. All right, that's how we've got Let's it. See how but, we line uh, up. I'm sure we'll be wrong. Uh, what else did you want to talk about? Just with Collingwood's backline, Jared. I know we had a little bit of a discussion yep. about this um, the other uh, last week, and just Darcy Moore went out of the game, and it just as good as Darcy Moore is. I'm not saying he, you know anything about his role within the team, but what it did, it just straightened their defence up more, back shoulder, man on man, not relying on you know a, a, an opposition player getting up behind the contest and dropping off, going with and. Just change their dynamic, which actually looked pretty good. Do you understand? I, I thought. Do you understand the fallout with the Collingwood fans over this comment? Why? I'm not saying anything are you saying negative they're, about they're, Darcy Moore and his role. Absolutely better not. Better off without him. No, I'm not. But what I'm saying is that what they did structurally to assist him being off the ground and assist their defence was a was a, was a good change. That if a, something does happen to Darcy mm. over a finals night or campaign. I don't they know, think that I think they'll still be still be okay, no, but they'll have to play a more structured to, role that that Jared and I witnessed. You don't have to defend it to me because I'm I'm with you. I said on Monday night that uh, whoever he does go to, I know he doesn't go to anyone really. He just sort of backs himself to almost play as a forward. Would be licking their lips. You imagine if Darcy Moore went to you, being as smart a forward as what you were, knowing that he was going to pay you no respect and charge and try and intercept the ball. You'd get mm. him behind him. You'd do all sorts of multiple leads and tricks. I think he's vulnerable as as, as much as the Pies fans. Darcy Moore is vulnerable if the if they if they do poor turnovers or don't put pressure on yep. the exit. That's when Darcy Moore's most he's vulnerable. A that's, product of but the that's pressure. where that's where his forwards when you used to love your opposition player going in front of you or playing a bit higher or, or running up. As long as your your teammates created the turnover in the right spot, yeah. that's when you could really cash in on getting him out the back a couple of times. So that would then change his positioning and thinking he's, oh, I've already had two kicked on me. And it was a different time, but he yeah. already had two kicked on me. I better come play back shoulder. Then you just start playing your natural role on yeah. these on these guys. So it really does rely on what happens yeah. up the field. And it relies on that. his offensive influence as well. Like if he's not taking five, six intercept marks per game mm. as well, which he hasn't, and he's been scratchy and he's fumbly and he hasn't been the weapon that he was at the start of the year, then – you get exposed also with with that one on one stuff that has has reared its ugly head. Uh, what do you make of the bombers? You've been hot on them all year. Yeah, well, I have been, and I've I've enjoyed watching them this year. And their last couple of weeks have been average against sides that they should have really smashed. But maybe it's a personnel thing, and they're set to get back Caldwell, Draper, Shield, and Stringer. Now I know we haven't tipped them, but Draper's a massive is there, influence. He's been a huge. I agree, out, Jared. Massive so out. There, there could be. They could surprise in the next couple of weeks. Yep. With those four players in particular back into their lineup, then I think Draper's the big one. 
But outside of that, Caldwell, what he can offer around the ball, shield half forward around the ball and stringer forward pocket up around the ball at different stages, they're pretty important players to the to their success as a club. Do you think their opposition will take a leaf out of Alistair Clarkson's book and tag Zach Merritt? I think you have to put time into Zach Merritt. Absolutely. It's amazing because how this is evolving. Take... It's, it's just emerging but, coming at a critical time of the year. Don't you worry about He's that. their most important player, Zach Merritt. He's, and he's their captain. And if you can take the captain down, you're taking Cut the head 30, off. 30 really good disposals away. And if he gets... 10 to 15 scratchy ones, that's a So they move him to the win. forward flank like they have done Well, a that's a win in itself. Times. If you're moving Zach Merritt out of centre bounce or stoppage, you've you've won the battle. It happened earlier in the year and he kicked three goals. Yeah, it was against the Blues. Against the Blues. After half time. Yeah. Okay, yeah. it was. Um, there's a text coming here saying the AFL has already said that they've already announced that there'll be no final in Geelong because of the delay yeah, there of the go. stadium being built. I would be upset if I ran the cats, and ah, we're upset and not getting home finals the, and at Marvel. That was the case, yeah. we had to go to the and, MCG and to rightly, play home and finals. And just, just, so. just hold what? your protest play... until the stadium is built, and then go one hundred percent, and you'll, everyone will jump on board. We used board, to play the you? Swans in a final at the MCG or the Brisbane Lions, and our the, home ground was Marvel. Richmond got incredibly lucky for a couple of those big finals that they weren't held in Geelong, and they had to be played at the MCG. And I get it, but. You know, I think Geelong have got a right to feel a bit aggrieved on occasions with this. Uh, all right, uh, Jono, let's move on to your old mob, the Western Bulldogs. It was pretty disappointing, wasn't it, to, yeah. with the outcome on the on the weekend and, and doing the game and, you know, their second and third quarters, the way that they were, um, you know, beaten quite mm. convincingly by the Hawthorne midfield. And, look, it's, it's hats off to the Hawks. I, I think we've all enjoyed watching Hawthorne's development this year under Sam Mitchell. I think he's done a fantastic job. I think tactically he's getting stronger and better as a as a coach the more that he's rolling this team out. The belief in in each other is is huge. Newcomb is just a he's beast. He's a weapon. Oh, again, what he was able to do and the physicality that he showed, but then in a defensive nature, but also in an offensive nature as well with his don't argues and his ability to bump off his opponent and win the when the ball was was outstanding and across the board their work rate was just significantly better and it was it was great to watch and in the end you sort of sit back and you tip your hat to them and you go okay they're on the they're on the right path the bulldogs on the other hand you know that they'll win this week but you know there's still a lot of question marks about you know whether they make a final or or not we understand that if they if they're lucky enough to and it comes down to a bit of a bit of that now with some results going their way how far could they really go? Horny was very year? critical last night of the kicking of uh, some of the more high-profile distributors. I think that's been the the case all year, Jared. You look at when the Bulldogs perform really well outside of Marcus Bond and Pally putting them all on his shoulders and having an, an absolute binder and having thirty three and kicking three. Yeah, it's the ball use of of Dale Williams, Richards, Daniel, Daniel, Daniel uh, Trelaw in the middle of the in the middle of the ground. I think there and Vandermeer off half back. I think that's the, and then you got the tools too. The use that was it was either Bruce or Keith or, or yep. Gardner and their use when they did intercept down back. So that's that's been an issue I think all year. When they've kicked it really well, the dogs pierce and away they go, like they did against the Tigers um, a couple of weeks ago. But when the Oppo puts some good pressure on and they can't use it as well, they're you know they're causing turnover and they're getting scored on from those turnovers. The astronaut took three of the marks of the weekend and missed every one. When you lose by a goal, it really hurts. Well, it does, and that's that's been the nature, I think, of the evolving um, goal kicking of Aaron Norton and others. He's not the only one mm. which uh, which has missed opportunities throughout throughout the year. He's got to he's got to keep working. He's got to work hard. And we've said this for for the la- over the last twelve months that we've been talking together. The the goal kicking across the competition, it's it comes down to work and how much work they're able to put in or allowed to put in as players. Mm. And it's on their shoulders. If if you want to be a successful forward. Uh, you can compete and you can take the hangers and you can do what you like, but unless you're putting it straight through um, from easy opportunities, then you know you're not doing your job to 100 percent of your ability. There's this Steph Curry. I don't. People get a little bit annoyed when you compare our game to American sports, but I've watched a couple of documentaries in recent times. One was a quarterback documentary on Netflix, and which and is cool. Follows I'm watching that Patrick at Mahomes and, yep. and what he does away from the football club. Mm. Not what he does at training, the above and beyond stuff he does away from that in his own time, hires a personal trainer. I get he signed a contract for half a billion, so it makes it a bit easier. <laughs> Steph Curry, there's another documentary on Apple TV about him and what he does away from his training time to work on his shot, to work on his strength. He's got his gym at home and the extra stuff that he does to be 
the best shooter that we've ever seen. I still think we can learn from that, John. It's a big bugbear of mine that these players don't put in enough but time. Some some do, and the ones that are successful do because you look at and I know the Bond and Josh Dunkley and so a couple of others me, go so go tell, to America tell, in the yeah, off so season me, and, yeah. and tell, train, yeah. and, but it's it's off their own bat. And Has yes, it through a little from, bit of sponsorship and bits and pieces, but they're doing it to get themselves set the up week, for. What about during the 24 weeks of the season? That's, I don't know. How many guys do you think? On I know what I used to do, Jerry, but extra. I don't know what the players do I, would say I couldn't tell you. you. Whenever you retired, 12, 15 years ago, whatever it was, you would have done more training then than they're doing now. And how, how, Because of this movement, oh, we've got to give the players time off. We've got to give them mental relaxation. Geelong sort of started and everyone's copying. I don't know if that's the right way to go. Jared, as you know, you know my thoughts on it. Mm. But, um, yeah, goal kicking is another highlighting that well it's just got we've, we've said and we've said this before the one coach the one one position on the ground that has a coach as an individual coach is the ruckman mm. everywhere else it's a collective and i've been saying for a long time until clubs actually see this and start employing significant individual specialist coaches for positions soft on cap the ground center, soft cap well work it out